Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott. Happy New Year to each one of you. I'm here today to give you a quick review of what I added to my kit, what I dropped from my own personal kit in 2017. I get a lot of questions about this over the course of the year because a lot of gear flows through my hands. A lot of people wonder what actually ends up in my own personal kit. And as probably many of you know, the, the gear that I review typically is gear that's been loaned to me by either retailers or manufacturers. And so I evaluate it and it returns home. So for the most part, I have to buy my gear just like anyone else. And so of course, as I evaluate a lot of gear over the course of the year, I make decisions about you know new products, whether or not they're compelling enough for me to replace existing products and you know and what I actually need, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, if you had tuned in in 2016, um, you found, and I found today as I went back and looked just by chance, I was wearing the same sweater a year ago, and uh, but a lot of other things have changed over the course of time. And so anyway, I'm gonna give you a quick look and just uh, discuss some of the things that I dropped along the way. Part of my discussion in 2016 was in reference to mirrorless and I had just sold the EOS M3 from Canon and I was evaluating the EOS M5. And, uh, and so I actually, in a lot of ways, I really like the EOS M5 and as far as stills and for just you know general photography, I thought the ergonomics were great. I like the camera a lot. But what ended up being a deal breaker for me was the lack of 4K coverage, which has become increasingly important for my website and uh, and also of course here for my YouTube channel and and so I you know I kind of do a lot of with mirrorless in particular I do a lot of video work with it probably almost as much as stills and so for that reason I ended up going with the Sony A6500 and um, while there has been some ergonomic um, you know adjustments along the way i don't like a lot of sony's ergonomics as much as what i did the eos m5 um, i love the video footage that comes out of this camera and i have learned to tweak one thing i do like about sony's is that you have a, a lot of ability to configure the buttons you know for your own purposes and so i've got it tweaked now after several months of use to where I, I like it quite a bit. I've been using it now for about six or seven months. And so um, I, I'm comfortable with it. I like the video footage in particular, and I also like the stills footage. And so of course I was kind of starting from scratch. And so I did add the Sigma MC11 adapter and along with some other adapters from Velo and so that I can you know, take my existing kit of um, Canon gear and I can you know, get a lot of it to work reasonably well um, on the uh, Sony body. Um, but I have built a small little kit of specific lenses for uh, APS, Sony APS-C. One of those is Sony's basic uh, 55 to 210 millimeter. This is an f4.5 to f6.3. It has the uh, steady shot built into it. And this lens is good, if not spectacular. It's, it's kind of a replacement for a similar Canon lens that I had before. And, and so, you know, it does the job. I don't reach for it all that often, but it's also a pretty small investment. I bought this one just used off of eBay. And so anyway, small kind of risk reward kind of payoff there. And the rest of my kit is actually uh, lenses from Sigma in their DN series. I reviewed a number of these this year and I felt that they were really great optics, great bang for the buck. And so I have one of the um, older series 60 millimeter F 2.8 lenses. This is a really nice little portrait portrait lens. It also is a really great video lens if I need a little bit longer framing. And, and so I really enjoy it for that. I also added and really enjoy it. It's probably the, it's the mirrorless lens that I use the most. It's the 30 millimeter F 1.4 um, lens from Sigma. It's a full frame equivalent of 45 millimeters and so kind of a normal lens. And so it's very handy. Um, it's sharp optically. And of course it has a very wide F 1.4 maximum aperture that just gives that extra degree of, of, of versatility. My most recent acquisition for this kit is another, this is a brand new Sigma lens. It's a 16 millimeter F 1.4 in this same uh, series as this lens. As you can see, physically it's a little bit larger, but it's optically quite sharp. It's a full frame equivalent of 24 millimeters. And so it gives me a nice, you know, wide perspective. It's also a really great video lens with probably the best that I've seen from Sigma in terms of the autofocus quality for uh, tracking, um, you know, and I'm talking about face tracking in video. Also, it's a very handy focal length. And so you can, you know, use it at the 
24 millimeter equivalent. And then if you um, you shoot in the, and that's in the Super 35 format, if you shoot in kind of the regular, um, you know, kind of crop factor of the camera at 4K, you get a, you know, a, kind of an early 30 millimeter, around 32 millimeter-ish, somewhere in that range, it seems like to me. And so also obviously a very useful focal length. Um, and so, you know, I like it um, in that regard as well. So what I ended up dropping, of course, is um, all of my, my Canon um, mirrorless lenses. And so that included the 22 millimeter F2, um, STM, the, uh, uh, the 55 to 200 um, STM lens. I also sold a, a lens that I really like. It's a Rokin on 12 millimeter F2 lens. Um, all of those lenses I had to part with as a part of a, a kit that, you know, was for a, a camera that I didn't have anymore. And so um, also what I ended up dropping this year is both the Tamron 24 to 70 f 2.8 VC and the 70 to 200 f 2.8 VC lenses, lenses I had used for a number of years in my kit, um, particularly for weddings and events and, and some for travel with the 24 to 70. Um, but I, I sold these because I had kind of gotten wind that the G2 versions were coming and I had already reviewed the 150 to 600 millimeter G2 and knew that there were some solid improvements to come. And so what I have ended up adding to my kit is the 70 to 200 G2 lens and uh, there's a lot that I like about it. It's already serving me well for video. I'm getting consistent autofocus out of it and there are some some key improvements over the previous generation lens that I am enjoying. Uh, I also uh, determined to not add a new 24 to 70 millimeter to my kit during that interim period where I didn't have one. I found that when I was shooting weddings or events, I was reaching for the Canon 35 millimeter F1.4 L Mark II. Love the results that I was getting, and so I decided that the extra trade-off in aperture um, and just the amazing optical quality of that lens um, was worth the, the lost versatility in terms of focal length. And so that's what I ended up going with there. Finally, I added a couple of manual focus lenses to my kit. Now, I don't know for sure whether or not that this particular lens is here for the long haul. I have to determine once I make one final change whether or not I actually end up using it a lot. But this is a beautifully crafted Voigtlander lens. It's a second Voigtlander lens that I own. It's a 40 millimeter F2 lens. And so, of course, I love the very compact package of it. And that's really what attracts me to a lens like this. And of course, mechanically, it's, it's beautifully constructed, beautiful lens. I might, you know, be some debate whether or not optically it gets reached for compared to my other 50 millimeter options that I have in my kit. And so uh, anyway, I, I did drop the Canon uh, 40 millimeter F 2.8 STM. I wasn't reaching for it very much. And the wider maximum aperture of this lens made me want to take a flyer on it. So jury's still out whether or not this is a long-term addition to my kit. Jury is not out on this lens. And last year I had sold my Canon 135mm f2 um, lens. And this year I took the plunge and I added the Zeiss Milvis 135mm f2 to my kit. And while, you know, just as I've said before about 135mm focal length, I don't reach for it all the time. But the images out of this lens are just so special that there are moments that I reach for it and I'm delighted in what it delivers for me. And I, I love Zeiss optics. I didn't have a lot of Zeiss lenses in my kit because they're expensive. And so consider this maybe a slow Zeiss building um, in my own personal kit. And so of course this is manual focus only, which leads me to a third consideration um, of something that is in the process of happening. And that is that I am selling my second Canon 6D body that I'd had. I'd sold one in 2016 and I'm about to sell another one. And uh, I, in the process, I'm probably going to make a transition pending my review of it to the Sony a7R 3 And uh, just to give me a higher megapixel body, also, I'm, I'm really loving the Sonys for my video work, and so that's kind of important to me. But also, I want, I want to be able to shoot lenses like this on a regular basis, and many DSLRs are not really that fantastic for manual focus lenses. And so I'm, I'm planning to use the Sony a7R 3 as my platform also for shooting a lot of my manual focus glass on. 
And so I'm looking forward to testing that. And I was supposed to have a copy of the A7R 3 in my hands already by this point. It hasn't arrived yet. There was some mess up with shipping, but I hope to be soon reporting to you about that. And so anyway, here is you know what I've dropped, what I've added in 2017 to my own personal kit. And you know, I, I evaluated some other things that didn't make the, make the cut. I evaluated the new 6D Mark II, and I thought that that might be an addition to my kit to replace my last 6D, but I wasn't impressed enough by it. And again, I need that video quality. And so um, Canon, if you're paying attention at this point, this is a, a real deal for a lot of photographers out there that you know use DSLRs use mirrorless in hybrid ways both for stills and for video and so I'm certainly one of those that is having to make some hard decisions about some Canon products based on my need for video above all and so of course that being said I'm filming on a 5d mark 4 right now which produces great video just at that incredibly huge bit rate that's not always necessary for the kind of work that I personally do I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you'll look in the description down below, you can find uh, some buying links for some of these things if you'd like to add some of these own things to your kit. And of course, I want to thank all of you for your support of my channel in 2017, all of the new subscribers, and all of you that are faithfully there checking out my new content. Thanks a lot for that. And again, Happy New Year. Have a great day.